Okay, so um, in this video, I'd like to talk about what we refer to as an annuity. Um, to help you to understand what that is, I don't know if you ever went into the bank. Maybe you were frequenting the bank, and so I. Um, maybe you're passing your your salary through the bank, and one of the teller probably suggests to you that if you don't want to set up an account where every month when your salary comes in, they're going to take a portion of it, well, a portion that you agree on, right? And you're going to take a portion of it every month. And it's going to be in there, something like a fixed deposit. So every month your salary comes in, they're going to take out a small amount. And you're going to put it into this account. And that amount is going to grow. That cumulative amount, along with interest, is going to grow. Well, basically, that's an annuity. Right? A more technical definition. It's in the notes that I gave you, um, that I, I will send to you. Right, and what a, what an annuity is, and this is a technical definition. It's basically a series of periodic payments. Usually, it's equal in size, and it's made at regular time intervals. Right, um, so it's either you putting in money, maybe to be saved, or not, you know, every month, every three months, every six months, every year. Right, and it's, you leave it there to grow like very much of a fixed deposit, and it's earning compound interest. Or it, it could also be a mortgage, right? A mortgage. So there's where the bank lend you some money, and you are actually paying it back uh, every month or every yeah. Most of the time, you pay a mortgage every month, right? That is a kind of annuity, right? So that's that's the whole idea there what an annuity is. And um, there are several types of annuity, right? Uh, and you actually, you know, kind of classify annu annuity based on how you pay, whether you pay it at the beginning or the end of a payment interval, like if you're putting the money at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month, or you're doing it every three months at the end of it or before the, the three month begins. Uh, that sort of thing, as well as um, apart from the, the payment method, right? Uh, well, you can talk about uh, the type of interest you, you, you earn, the interest rate, the timing of the payments, uh, the size of the periodic payment, lots of things come into play, right? Um, so there's a nice, let me, let me see if I can put up this chart here, yeah, this chart here. Yeah. So this chart kind of uh, summarizes, right? How you classify an annuity, right? So here um, you have what you call an ordinary annuity, and what that means is that you're paying, we're making the payments at the end of each payment period. So if your payment period is a month, every month then you put it in somewhere. Like you want to tell the, uh, the bank, tell them I want to lure you into uh, setting up, right? The other one, you notice they say the annuity due, right? So that is when you are paying at the beginning of each month. It doesn't have to be a, each month, but you can, you can do a three, three month period, six month period, um, one year period, that's all of it, right? So, ordinary annuity is when you pay at the end of the period, payment period. Annuity due is when you pay at the beginning, right? And under those two broad categories, well, you have what you call simple, right? And general. I right, see. So see, uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, right. I should be able to have it pretty clear. Yeah. So you see the words here. So, okay. Yeah. Ordinary, we're going to the end of each payment period. 
and it is due at the beginning of each period here, right? Then these now can be broken up into two. You see what simple, ordinary, simple. Now, when what, what this is talking about is when the compounding period and the payment period kind of coincide, right? They coincide. So if they're going to, let's just see, and this this banks don't do it very often. They don't pay, um, they don't um pay you interest every month, they pay you every quarter. So let's say every three months, right? Um the same time that they're going to pay you interest, you are going to deposit some money. So every three months, they're giving you interest. You are going to put in some money every three months, right? At the end of that period. But when the two of them coincide, when the compounding period and the payment period, right, are the same, right? Well, you call that an ordinary simple annual, right? And what if the compounding period and the payment period are different, right? So maybe compounding period is, is uh, quarterly, but you are putting in something every six months, right? Uh, well, you we call that an ordinary general annuity, right? And um, going over here now, annuity June. So when you have a situation where um, the compounding period and the payment period are the same. But remember, this this is when you, you, you're probably paying the money or you're depositing the money at the beginning of the payment period, right? So if the compounding period and the payment period are the same, right? Um, well, you call that a, a simple IMTG. And on the other hand, if the compounding period and the payment period are different, you refer to that as a general annuity, right? Now, the thing about these is that they're formulas, right? Uh, and the thing about this course, which is something I don't like, uh, but uh, it's the nature of the course, right? It would have been really good if we were able to uh, do the algebra to show you how the all of these formulas are uh, uh, arrived at rather than just give you the formula. For example, let, let's, let's go to one. So we're going to uh, okay. Let's say we want to talk about the future value, right? Or the accumulative value of an ordinary simple I annual. Mean, this is the formula, right? So every time you change your hand. When you, when you change the type of annuity, right? So here we're talking about an ordinary, simple annuity. This is the formula. So if you were to make payments of, and your payment is a certain amount, you're putting in 10,000 every month. Let's just say, right? Uh, for a certain amount of time, you probably say, I will do this for, uh, you know, so many times per year, right? You have, you have a formula here. So there's a formula for ordinary general annuity. There's a formula for annuity, sorry, sorry simple annual, annuity due and general annuity due, right? So there's a different formula, each one of them, right? The, um, the, the algebra of how they come up with this formula is, is an interesting study, right? Uh, not for you now. It, this is not a course for it, right? It will take quite a bit of time and quite a bit of study for you to see how all these formulas are calculated, right? Or how they arrived at, sorry, right? So look at this one. Let's, let's just examine the parts. And don't get scared because especially when you look at the course, you can see a lot of formulas. Very likely, your test is basically an open book test where you're going to have, you can write down all the formulas. Right? You have it right near you. So all you got to do is pick out, you have to match the situation and say, oh, you know what? In this problem, I'm dealing with an ordinary general annuity. You jump to that formula and you apply it. Right? I wouldn't tell you which one it is. Right? So I, I will just give you a problem. You got to match the type of annuity 
with the right formula and work it out. So keep that in mind. So don't, don't, don't you know, when you see every one of these things that are new formula, you start worrying. Because you're going to get a chance to have a formula she clear you, right, when you're writing the test. So you shouldn't complain, oh, how I don't remember all of that formula. You don't have to remember it because you want to have it. What you'll be tested on, you'll have to be able to assess a situation. I give you a situation. You'll have to examine it and be able to figure out what kind of annuity this is, right? And, well, which is the right formula. And then you have to use some reasoning and so on to solve maybe some kind of mathematical problem, right? Keep that in mind. So here you have, all right, this is the formula for, notice, the future value, how much money will accumulate if you are involved in a scheme that is that could be classed as an ordinary simple annuity. When you talk about ordinary simple annuity, what you're telling you is that the compounding period and the payment period is the same thing, right? So every three months you're carrying in some money, every three months um, they're giving you interest, right? And when they, when they refer to ordinary, you must remember that you are actually making the payment at the end of the payment period. So like every three months, January, February, March, you carry in some money. Then the people are offering you interest at that time. This formula holds, right? So just to explain the various parts, the PMT just represents says, the periodic payment. So you say, if you tell the bank man, uh, let's take out a 10,000 every month and put it in the account, right? That's it, that's the payment, right? I is the period, the periodic interest rate. And we, we did some of this when we were doing compound interest. It's the interest rate for the year, right? Uh, the nominal interest or what, what they call it, right? And this is the, the number of compounding periods or the, the, the frequency of compounding, right? So they're doing it quarterly, which is four times, right? So you do that. We did this, we use this formula a lot, but now you should be familiar with it, right? And N is the number of payments in the annuity term, right? What I mean is that, all right, if you're going to pay, how much payments you want to make for a year? If are you going to, you put in this money every month? Well, that would be 12, right? Uh, right? And if, okay, you're, you're doing that for so many years, two years, let's say you're doing it for five years, right? So you will put 12 multiplied by five, which will give you what, 60? Yeah. So those, uh, those are all the parts you need to know, right? So you have your payment, the periodic interest, and the N is calculated by well, how many payments you make per year multiplied by the number of years T, right? So you put that N up there, uh, and you do the calculation, right? So the calculator is going to do all of this for you too, so you don't have to worry, right? And we'll just do an example. We, we wouldn't do an example of, all right, this one has to do with uh, ordinary simple annuity, right? Uh, please don't expect that I'll do, you know, one with everything, ordinary general an annuity. Then I'll have to do another one for simple annuity due. Um, and general annuity due. That's that's four examples. That's a lot, right? Maybe if you want to see one of that in the tutorial, yeah, maybe we can entertain one of them or two, right? But we, we can't do all of them uh, because each one of them is a formula. It's just formulas you apply, right? As I said, the hardest thing you have to watch the situation and you have to know well, which, which, what kind of annuity am I dealing with here? And you have to match it with the right format, right? Keep that in mind. Let's take an example. So uh, this one, I mean, it's a giveaway. We already said it's an ordinary simple annuity, right? So this person is going to deposit $360 at the end of each month for 12 years, right? In some kind of, uh, some kind of plan, savings plan, you know? The interest rate they give you 7.5%. And notice they say it's compounded monthly, right? So notice some, some keywords here, how you know. Let's say right, you didn't have this heading, ordinary simple annuity, you didn't have that. I throw this question at you. You have to look for words that like, okay, she's gonna deposit money at the end 
of each month. So right away, this has to do with the end of a certain payment period. So you know, oh, we're talking about ordinary annuity. Well, which one, which one, which one of the ordinary ones? The simple or the general? Are you looking for another keyword? The keyword here is that okay. Um, the interest rate, right? Notice they say it's compounded monthly. So she's putting in the money monthly and the interest is compounding monthly. So because the compounding period of the payment period are the same, you come to the conclusion, ah, I know which formula to use here. I'm going to look at the formula for ordinary, simple, and easy, right? And maybe you can group them up. This is your, your little group when you study. You could put all the formulas that have to do with ordinary simple annuity one side, then ordinary general annuity, then simple annuity due, general annuity due. You can put all the formulas. You can classify your formulas how you want. That's your job as a student, right? I can't arrange things for you, right? Well, so. So they want some they want some things from us. They said, how much will we accumulate? How much will be the accumulated value of our investment? So that's one thing. How much will she have contributed to the account by the end of the term? Okay. And how much interest will be earned on the amount? Right? So, and on the account, sorry. So what are some things here? So you're seeing interest is compounded monthly. So uh, the frequency of the compounding, uh, the compounding frequency is 12. Uh, payments per year is 12 as well, right? And look at it, because these two are equal, oh, you are dealing with an ordinary simple annuity. Great. Good. So it's going to happen for 12 years. Uh -huh. Number of payments in that period of time, you're making 12 payments for 12 years. So you will make 144 payments. Uh, nominal interest is 7.5%. The periodic interest is going to be much smaller than that. You divide by 12, which is 0.65. The periodic payment, the PMT, is 360. And it's like she doesn't have any money in the account, right? Zero. So her present value is zero. We are going to look at an example a little later on where you know, like you go into the bank, and I, I've seen this where they, they, I go to the teller, and they tell you, man, you don't want to do this thing where we set up an account. And usually, we set up an account, I put someone inside, right? You can't start from zero. And and she said, look, let me take this amount of money, put it in this account, and every month you will add to it. So we're going to go to a problem like that later on in the, uh, the, the lesson, where you have a lump sum here, and now you are going to, um, you know, add money to it every month. You're going to have, um, have some kind of annuity going on after that, right? So we're going to look at that. Don't, don't confuse that with this one. So this one, you have no money in the beginning. You're starting a scheme to save money for when you are probably older, you know? Yeah. So the answer, let's go. Uh, just the formula again. We quote the formula. We know all the numbers. We know the PMT. We know the N. We know the I. We put them in there. And I'm hoping that um, people can actually like take 1 plus 0.625 and raise it to the 144 power. Right? Uh, I hope your, your calculator can do that. So that will be difficult for some, right? Then you take away your 1 divided by your raise and or divided by 360 in front and you get roughly $83,676.89. Um, right? So that will be the accumulated value of our investment. They ask you how much she actually contributed during that 144 months. How much she actually put in? Well, she put in, well, the 144 months, every 360, she put in 360 every month, right? So in all, she had put in $51,840. So it shouldn't be difficult for you now to, um, to, calculate how much interest she earned. If she put in 51,840 and her future value is 83, what is that, 676, well, the interest she earned during that period is $21,826.81. Right? So, 
So yeah. Um, that's how much interest you learn. Yeah, maybe let's look up one more time, right? Let's look up one more time. Okay, so this is future value of ordinary general annuity. So in the general, remember we said the compounding period and payment period is a little different, which happens very often. As a matter of fact, this is a common thing that happens with our banks because we might be telling the bank every month take out 10,000 out of the salary and put it into this account. But the bank usually compound the interest every three months, right? Because I, I, I deal with two banks and both of them, they compound quarterly, right? They compound quarterly. So this, this is more of a realistic situation that you and I deal with at our banks all the time. You're working a job and you're saving for your future, right? You were, you were telling me every month they put a 10,000 man, right? But they are compounding every quarter, so they don't go much. In that situation, you're going to call it an ordinary general annuity. I remember you were always, um, in this case, you are paying the money every month end. The fact that it's a month end, you're doing it, that falls under ordinary annuity. So this is the formula. So the periodic interest is going to be a little different because the, the frequency of compounding and the amount of payments per year is a little different. They don't, the two don't match. So they will cause an alteration of the interest, right? Um, it's good for, for, for you to maybe try a question where um, you have a, a ordinary simple annuity and you have an ordinary general annuity and see which one gives you more money, which one accumulates more money for a fixed period of time. That's something for you to do, right? Don't let me have to explore all those things for you. You're a student. You will want to find out because I can very well ask you. I can give you some scenarios and tests and say, well, which one of these annuities will will accumulate more money for you as a better investment. You know, uh, you will have to pick it out, right? So don't let me have to do the work for you, right? You have to do the work, that's how you are going to develop, right? Later on, you have some of your other uh, uh, investment uh, and consultant. You, you don't know which thing is going to produce more money for the person. How are you going to give them advice? Right? You got to understand these things. Right? And, and when you know that, well, then you will be in a better position to give advice. Right? Good. So once you calculate the periodic interest with this formula, um, you go into this. Well, the formula is very similar to the last one, except the I has a subscript to one. That I is subscript to has to be calculated before. Right? So let's go on like that. So this person is depositing $250 at the end of every three months notice for 15 years into an account. But the interest is compounded semi-annually. Notice the difference, right? Payment period and a compounding period, the two don't line up, right? Uh, and then they say that you, you, you're putting in that 250 at the end of every three months and deal with ordinary and because the compounding period uh, the compounding period and the payment period don't match up as you're seeing here as you're seeing here then you know you're dealing with an ordinary general annuity right so you put in all the information you can write them down look they're all here right uh, so we got everything here. C. Uh, you have P. You know that you're not the same, so yeah. You know what you're dealing with. You're dealing with ordinary general annuity. It's going to happen for 15 years. Number of payments. Uh, payments in that time period is going to be 4 multiplied by the 15, which will be 60. The nominal interest is that. 
the interest rate for compounding period, well, this is what we're interested in, right? We want this. Yeah, we want this. Remember, that is in a formula, right? That is in a formula. We have to calculate that. You know how much you put in every month, uh, every what? Three months. And then at the beginning, you have no money. You didn't put nothing in, right? Keep that in mind. So let's see the answer. So we calculate our periodic uh, interest rate using this formula. We got this, right? Uh, so maybe you'd have to keep keep a couple of decimals, you know? And I'll just truncate it to early. But then you put it in the formula we had in the earlier slide, right? You put everything in the formula, you get this, and let the calculator do the work. Here is where you have to practice doing this kind of calculation, right? And you say that, well, when the 15 year pass, the maturity period, the person is going to end up with $23,964.80, right? So that's the future value after 15 years. So next, uh, well, you can calculate the interest. You know how much you, uh, you actually will, the person will pay over that 15 year period. It's the number of payments by the amount she's paying and the future value just subtract that from it, right? And you get, uh, she earned an interest of, uh, she earned an interest of $8,964.80, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, there's a formula for notice, simple annuity due, another formula. I'm not going to go through an example now uh, because, again, you just have to all right, maybe let me do one. Let me do an example. But what I'm telling you is that um, every one of them has a different form. They're, they're close. Write them down. Try to organize your a formula sheet. Categorize which formula belongs to which type of annuity and so on. You know? uh, yeah. So here, uh, it's, it's an annuity, due type of annuity, right? And... Remember, in this case, is when you make the payment at the beginning of the period, right? So let's take a situation. This is a simple annuity due, meaning uh, when you talk about simple an an annuity due, the compounding period and the payment period is the same, the measure. So if they are giving you compound interest every three months and you're paying every three months, yeah, that that is a, a simple annuity due. And remember, you have to be paying at the beginning of the period. So now we're paying for the end of the three months, then you pay. You pay before the three months start. Right? That is what, it, what makes it an annuity, due type of annuity. And so that, maybe I'll just cover one more example. What you say, you know, you should already show you one like that. So here's it. This Kian um, is going to save for something. Uh, he's going to take some 10 years to save this money, right? So he's making deposits of $500. And notice some keywords at the beginning of each month, right? As well as interest is going to be paid, right? Monthly. It's going to be compounded monthly. So right away, you're seeing that, okay, the compounding period, right? And the, um, the deposit period is the same, right? Every month, every month. And the, the next thing you're watch is that he, he's making these this $500 deposit at the beginning of the month. So that's why we call it an annuity June. You know, we're waiting for the thing uh, at the end of the, of the month, no, you mean at the beginning of the month, right? So we have all the information here. Uh, the compounding frequency is 12. How many deposits is going to make? 12 as well, because you're going to every month. The two are the same, so you call it a simple. Word simple comes in there. Right? 
10 years, okay, number of payments in that time is going to be 120. They give you the nominal interest rate. This interest rate per compounding period, right? Is going to be this, right? Uh, what's that? That's a small one, trying to find it. Two seven percent. But we got the periodic payment, and you're not starting with anything, right? So you take all of this, show it in this formula, and that's what you get. Right? So you work the calculator. You can do it at one go. Do it in pieces, right? I want to take one plus this amount of thing here, then raise it to 120, then subtract one, then divide by this, right? You want to write it down, so it's up to you. Then you multiply by 500, write that down. Then you take this one point. Well, you can do this in your head or not. One point, zero, zero, two, seven, and you multiply it by this whole amount here, and you'll get $70,999. Uh, when you're wrong with you get 87 cents, right? What you could do again in your own time, you can't figure it out. That's a whole bunch of other things. What you need to do is take your calculator and try and try and try and see until you get this answer, right? And then you will know how to do it um, over time, right? Then you'll know. Good. So let's see another one. So this is when you're dealing with a general annuity journal, right? Where the compounding period and the payment period, they don't coincide. They're not the same, right? So here, um, again, you have to find a, a I subscript two, remember? And there's a formula for it. Look, it's right there, right? It's right here. It's right here. I subscript two, very similar to the one we had earlier. And you take that and put it in the formula. Right? So we're not going to do one like that. I want to go to one where you actually have a, a lump sum at the beginning, you know? Let me see if I can find one like that. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, give me one second. Good. Look, look at this one here. And, and most likely, this is what happens. You go into the bank and uh, you already have some money there, right? Uh, or, or even if you're starting an account, right? You have to have you have to put some money in. You have to put a lump sum in. Right? The bank, I think some banks say 5000 some say 10000 And some people will feel shame and say, man, let me put a good amount of money. So they move over, let's say, 100000 you know, or more. And then the annuity starts. So this is a situation like that. So uh, they say this person, Nancy, planning for retirement, you know. So she has 15000 already, right? And she is going to, okay, she's 30, she's planning to retire at 6 or 7. So she starts to contribute, notice, $500 at the end. Notice the time will end here, right? So right away, you're talking about an ordinary type of annuity, right? She's doing it each month. She's going to put in $500 a month. And notice it's going to be compounded quarterly. So that's a general, that's ordinary general annuity, right? You, you know, you see in why. Go back to the chart and you will see. You have to calculate the future value of Nancy's 401k when she retires. Then you have to calculate the total amount of interest that will be earned on the account by the time Nancy reaches the retirement age. Right? So uh, all the information is here. Right? You can pause the video and um, just figure out how they got all of that. It's all right up top here. The only thing I think you calculate in here is N and I over C, right? Which is 1.75. So they want us to say, um, calculate the, uh, they want the future value, they want the amount of interest. Okay, those are the two things they want. All right. So let's, let's go to the calculation, all right? 
So Okay, so in this case, you have to calculate the uh, I subscript two because uh, the compounding period and the payment period is kind of not the same, right? So we do that first. We got the formula. Uh, it's a very small amount, point zero zero five seven nine nine six three. Very ugly, huh? Yeah, right. So then now we take that, substitute the formula. And this is what she's going to get from, and remember this is from the, her monthly payments as along with the interest, right? It's going to give her this. But remember she put in some, she had some money at the beginning. Don't forget that, right? Don't forget that. So after we have calculated this, and again, you must try it. Try these numbers are rather cumbersome to enter into a calculator, right? Uh, notice they didn't wrong the value up here, uh, down yet. They didn't wrong it in the cent yet. You're going to do that later on, right? So you get this. This is the future value. Plus, remember, um, she had a certain amount of money. How much was it? 15000 Yes. She had 15000 right? And that is going to gather interest as well, right? And well, this is the compound interest formula you see here, up here. Right? We did this in the last video. So the compound interest value uh, formula is going to tell you how much that 15,000, the lump sum that she had in there, is going to accumulate in terms of interest and so on. So that is going to be $195,517. Point two six two cents, right? So we take that and we add it to the previous value, and you get what is it? This is what wow, you get a lot of money one million, is that right? Two hundred thirty three thousand and thirty eight dollars and fifty two cents, right? Quite a bit, right? So, yeah, and well, the last slide they will actually tell you the interest, right? How much it earned in all. Well, you see here, right? The future value uh, minus all the payments she paid plus that. Remember, she put in some money at the beginning, right? Yeah. So uh, this is a nice one. This is more realistic, this example here. Because this is what happens. You go into the bank, they, they, they entice you and say, man, um, put some money uh, you're in this account now and every month we will take out a certain amount and put it in there to for you to save over time, you know, they tell you that. Because they want to hold on to as much money from you as possible, you know. Right? So they, they can lend people at a higher interest. So the banks entice you with that. Every time you're going to tell me that, man, put aside some in another account now, which you don't touch. And every month we will put in a hundred thousand or what, you know. Yes. Uh, Good. And then, um, so we covered, you know, basically how the, the future value then of annuities, these annuity schemes, right? So now that same formula, we can actually um, now manipulate to find out the present value. Like if you were to know, um, all right, you, you were to find out that, well, okay, some kind of annuity was set up and you know right, um, certain details, how much was there at the beginning? That's what they're telling you. How much was there at the beginning? That, that's what they want to talk about, right? The present value, right? Uh, and this is a formula for it. We're not gonna go into, because there's, there's all of them involves a formula, right? So you gotta look for, if I ask you, I give you a question and ask for the present value, PV, right away, Right? Uh, and sometimes I may not use the word present value, right? I may use some kind of synonym. How much money was there to begin with? Right? Well, here, yeah, you might you might have to do that, right? Or or how much money you were depositing uh, at the beginning. That sort of thing. So something to that effect. You gotta know well, oh, what, what is it exactly this guy wants, right? 
So yeah, let, 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 let's take an example. Right, so let's take this one. So, so in this example, uh, we're considering a bank offering an investment opportunity. So what's the investment opportunity? They want you to, they want to provide an annual payment of twelve hundred dollars. Um, twelve hundred dollars at the end of each year for the next seven years. Uh, so what they're basically saying that okay, you're gonna put some money in. You're gonna put a we call a present value in. So you're gonna put some money in, and that money is going to accumulate interest. So the money is there plus the interest. But they if you want to calculate it in such a way that every year you can withdraw twelve hundred dollars. And you can do that for seven years, right? That's basically what the problem is saying, right? So they want to provide payments of twelve hundred dollars at the end of each year for the next seven years at well, this six percent compounded annual. So what is the required initial deposit that should be made by a customer today? You know, and, and just to give you a similar situation, this is like. Um, you know, like when you have, maybe you have a, some funds in the bank and you want that fund to be able to, you keep you up for several years, you know, like a retirement fund, like this is something like that. So we have all the information here. Um, we can see that we're okay. This is an ordinary, simple annuity. And they give you the reason why there. So all the information is here that was given in the problem. So, um, so substituting in the formula now, um, all the information we had in the previous slide, um, well, they're going to give us that $1,200 payment or every, at the end of every year, uh, we got the interest the periodic interest 0 0.06 seven years uh, that's seven you see there where the n is and when we calculate we end up with six thousand six hundred and ninety eight dollars and eighty six cents so if we were to have that money in the bank we can afford at the end of each year to go withdraw twelve hundred dollars and we can do that for seven years all right that's what um, this problem is about Yeah, so and, and it goes on like that, right? Present value again, another formula. Uh, present value for a simple annuity due, that's another formula. Uh, present value for a general annuity due, another formula, right? So you can have all these types of situations, you know? So um, I don't want to, you know, if you... The more the more of this you see, you might very well say, how many possibilities are there, right? But you don't worry about that. Have a, a, a formula sheet. Write down all your formulas, right? You can categorize them according to, well, what type of annuity you're dealing with. You can do that, right? You can categorize them if you want to put all the future value formula one side, all the, uh, the present value formula one side. That's your business, right? Yeah. Um, so let's look at this one. Um, this is a situation where uh, it's like you're taking a mortgage, and um, when you when you have a, um, you have, you're you're going to the bank, you're taking this mortgage. You have to have a down payment, right? And that's what you see here. And then the bank is going to give you some money, right? They'll give you a sum of money. So you'll take, you'll take the money they give you, right? And of course, you're going to pay off the people and so what point. So this is like a mortgage, right? So you want to compute the present value and purchase price when um, you, you know the down payment. So 
It says Andy made a down payment of $40,000 on an apartment and secured a mortgage for the rest of the purchase price. Right? He has agreed to repay this mortgage with end of month payments of $1,580 for 30 years at a 3.45 annual interest rate compounded monthly. Right? So she, he's paying monthly, he's compounding monthly, so you don't know you're dealing with an ordinary simple annuity. Right? Uh, yeah. So you want to calculate the original price of the apartment, determine the total amount, and he will pay by the end of this 30 year period. Calculate the amount of interest he will pay. Right? So let's see. So he makes a long payment of 40000 He's going to pay $1,580 every month. All the information is here. The future value is zero, meaning at the end of this all, you must pay off the money. That's why they say future value must be zero. All right? Let's see how they will solve it. So, uh, they're con computing the present value, right? So, we put in all the information and we calculate and the present value turns out to be $354,055.04. So that's the, the mortgage principal. In other words, that's what the bank gave him. That's what the bank gave him. So the purchase price now, right? Remember, you have to make a down payment of 40000 and the present value. That's the value of the property, right? Add the two together. So that's really the purchase price, right? That's really the purchase price. Good. So that's the purchase price. And then he needs to pay money now, right? <laughs> Total money he's going to pay for 30 years. Uh, yeah, 30 by... Started by 12, it's 360. Yeah, oh, yes, yes, 360. By the one, uh, 1580 every month. Uh, so he's going to end up paying 568,800. Right? So the money he actually borrowed, or, or the amount of money he purchased the property for, right, is 394,000. And fifty-five dollars and four cents, and you end up paying five hundred and sixty-eight thousand eight hundred. So, in other words, you paid an interest of two hundred and fourteen thousand seven hundred forty-four dollars and ninety-six cents. Right, and this this is a nice situation because um, here we have a situation that is real. This is how you do. You know, you go to the bank and. You want to buy something. So they tell you what, well, you got to make a down payment, right? And we're going to give you this, this, this amount, this, uh, what do you call it? The, the present value, right? They, they'd give you that. And you will end up paying now a repayment of, well, let's say, $15 or $80 for 360 months, right? So, yeah. This is an interesting uh, one. So I think we have two very interesting ones. One where like when you go to the bank and you put in a lump sum and then you set up some kind of annuity scheme. Here is a situation where you know you go for a mortgage, right? And the annuity really is really the calculation of how you're gonna pay back. And we're gonna do well, something called amortization. Maybe that's our next video we deal with, right? And you'll see how you they work out how you repay the loan bit by bit. So that eventually the loan is is amortized or or, or, or paid off or, or killed, you know? <laughs> yeah. But so again, there there are all these formulas for payment now. If you want to rearrange. Remember, we had a formula earlier where the future value um, 
is connected to the payment. If you rearrange the formula, you get the payment formula here, right? This one, this in this one, it's written in terms of the future value. There was one for the present value, but you rearrange it now and have the payment in terms of the present value, right? And sometimes they can give you a problem like that where uh, they say, look, you want in the future, right? They give you some conditions and say, watch, at the end of so much years, you must get so much money. So they don't tell you the future value. You yourself might sit down and say, you know what? For me to retire, I think I need 10 million Guyana dollars. I'm just saying, right? So you say, well, look, I need to get 10 million Guyana dollars. So in other words, your future value is 10 million, right? So and you want to know, well, okay, um, if, if the interest rate of the bank, you need to find out that, you need to find out that. And then you have so many months more, this end here, so many payments left in you. You know, maybe you only have those amount of months or, or so to live or, or until you retire, sorry. You can now use this formula and calculate how much you should be paying, right? To the bank or what in this account, like in this annuity so that you can accumulate um, that amount of money to retire, right? So this is an interesting formula, right? So as I said, every formula uh, will, will accomplish something different. And here's where you gotta figure out which formula to use. So like the situation I, I, I described here, you're, you're doing a retirement plan for yourself. You want at the end of your retirement period a certain future value, MB. You go to the bank and you say, man, I want to set up a thing for you. What is the all interest rate if I put this money fixed deposit? Right? And then you, you got to work out how many months more you got until retirement end. Right? You understand? And when you do all of that, the interest rate, future value, and well, you would know how much you got to pay every month. Right? And you say, okay, here, watch. Tell the bank teller, watch. I'm going to set it up that this amount of money I'll pay every month. All right? So let me see if I can find Let me see if I find one. I'm not sure I have one, but let me check. Let me check. And see. All right? Let me check. All right. Look at this one. It's not exactly like the situation I, I um, described just now, but it's close. So you want to make, maybe you want to accumulate $12,000 in the bank in six years. So you find out from the bank and they say, oh, uh, they're giving a 4.8% per annum and they're compounding it monthly, right? So, and you're going to, you know, at the end of each month, you can tell them, take out this amount of money and put it inside. But you want to know how much you must tell them to take out, right? Good. So you got all our information here. I hope people can figure out you're doing it monthly. So compounding frequency is going to be 12. Uh, because it's monthly and you're paying for, for a particular year. So 12 times you're going to be paying. The two are the same. So you're dealing with an ordinary, simple annuity, right? You're doing it for six years. So N is 72. Your nominal interest is that, so your periodic interest rate is going to be this, 0.4. Uh, you have nothing in the bank at the beginning, but you can start with something, no problem with the F0. And your future value, you want it to be 12,000, right? So we had we just saw the formula. You know, use the formula. That's, that's the formula here. And you calculate the bank, do some calculation, and they say, you know what? You are gonna, uh, you got to take out $144.15 every month from you. So when your salary coming at the end of the month, we're going to take out this, right? And it will accumulate the, how much they want it? $12,000 in six years at 4.8%, right? So yeah, that's a nice situation here, right? That's a nice situation. Um, that, like what I'm, I'm telling you about. Okay, um, give me a second here. Good, so yeah, as I said, you might have a formula, look here. 
for ordinary general annuity. We'll have another one for um for simple annuity due. You have one for general annuity due, right? And I don't want to, you know, um one example each one of them. I just want to let you know that uh, yeah. They have these like okay, let me see if I can find the other. Uh, yeah, let me give you another one. So watch it. Right? Payment. Again, you have another two there. Right? So you, you have to see which situation you're dealing with, right? What type of annuity. And if you have to do a payment calculation, well, that's the formula. Right? In the notes, there are examples of all of them. Right? If there's one, let's say we, when we're having the tutorial, there's one, I say, man, sorry, why don't you explain this one, you man? What is the example you have, right? And I can dissect the example, right? But the examples that I give you in the notes, they are very, very simple, very, very simple, right? The hardest thing, I mean, as I said, the formula shouldn't be hard because you have them. You're going to have them on a formula sheet. Right? The hardest thing will be you putting numbers in those formulas and putting the right numbers and working the calculator to get your answer. Keep that in mind. All right? And then uh, yeah, all of these, yes, another set here. This is another set. You have to calculate payments. All right? So these are all formulas you can use. And then just not to, <laughs> I know I've been talking about how many formulas you have to use. Here's another couple. If you have to calculate the number of payments now for the various situations. So again, they rearrange the formula, a lot of algebra and so. And these formulas will give you how many payments you're going to make, right? To, to to achieve a certain, maybe look here, for a certain um, final or future value, right? And what payment you got to make at what interest rate, right? And for to acquire a certain future value, how many payments you need to make. So that's what this formula is going to do for you, right? So these two will match um, the ordinary simple annuity, right? And I'll give you, let me see, it's these two, right? If you're going to deal, deal with, yes, ordinary general annuity. And then, hmm, I know, I know you must be saying it's a lot of formulas. And then this one, if you're dealing with simple annuity, Jew, these two, <laughs> I think you had enough of formulas. And then this one is for general annuity June, right? Remember those four categories. Ordinary simple annuity, ordinary general annuity, simple annuity June, general annuity June. Just remember those. And once you're able to do that, um, you just match the formula, match the formula, analyze the problem, write down all the information that is given, see which is the right formula to use, do your calculation and draw your conclusion, right? So yeah, that's a nice introduction here to annuity, right? It's a common thing. Um, they basically do it like that, the calculation that if you take a mortgage or you are saving, a lot of people who are saving for retirement, you know, sometimes some people feel like children, they, they set up an annuity. So by the time the child is 18, or are they going to college? In America, they go to college at 18. For us in Ghana, they might go to university at 16. So um, you have money set aside. And then they go into the bank and say, well, I'd like to have that money that I was saving in my... Uh, we don't use the word annuity, right? Uh, I mean, the layman don't use the word, right? But he was the, um, the export in the area, soon to be export. You can use those terms, right? And talk about annuity. <laughs>
All right, so that's that for this uh, particular topic. I think I mentioned I'm going to do something on amortization. So I'll do a video on that uh, later on. Okay, so we'll stop there.